with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, second on the agenda would be uh, changes to the order of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Weiss, any changes? Council? Okay. Uh, reports from closed sessions we just had from 6 to 7. Uh, Mr. Rubens? There is, uh, excuse me, there is one report from closed session. Um, the City Council on item um, 3 of the closed session authorized um, the city manager to file a model claim with the California Commission on State Mandates. Okay, great. Thank you. Moving on to item number four, uh, council communications and announcements. Uh, since there's more of you on the right, by the way, Mr. Gaselli has excused absence this evening. Uh, but with that, Mr. Klein, any announcements? Um, I'm on, I just spoke to our city manager. He's going to give us a quick report um, later on about what happened, about our response to San Bruno, so I won't get into that for the fire board. Um, other than that, I would just like to announce that the uh, Parks and Rec Foundation had a great fundraiser on uh, Friday that the mayor and I took uh, part in. It was a, a golf or play for parks. It was a golf tournament out of Poplar Creek. Uh, the mayor's team was behind me, and his team shot six strokes under, and my team shot eight strokes under. So <laughs> just so you know, the better golfer on the dais is myself. <laughs> and thankfully, Councilman Grisilli is not here. <laughs> great. That's it. That's all I got. Vice Mayor Ahmad. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there was uh, a number of uh, things that did happen this weekend regarding uh, San Bruno, so I would only uh, add that the Red Cross is calling for donations, and uh, especially blood donations. Uh, so I would call for my uh, colleagues on the dais if you want to join me uh, tomorrow uh, to give some blood. That would be great, and I would encourage everybody else to do so. Uh, I am looking forward to a further report. Uh, the one other thing I would mention, uh, Mr. Mayor, is I do sit on the board for uh, Sam Trans. Uh, Santrans did make available a couple of buses that night. We did have some uh, terrific folks uh, from the uh, the bus drivers group who actually took some buses over to San Bruno the night that the event occurred uh, to serve as temporary shuttle, and we're trying to build also some some additional transportation options for some of those folks who have lost their vehicles. Uh, hopefully we'll have some more details soon. Great. Thank you. Mr. Kirkott. On a different item, uh, I wanted to... <clears throat> Uh, let the community know that the family of uh, Gwen and Taz Hofer made a donation to our library of two hundred thousand um, dollars. They were great volunteers uh, over the years. They were, long, they were longtime San Carlos residents, and uh, they were involved in the initial funding when the library was built back in uh, 1999, and. Uh, the the husband Taz he passed away at age 91 in 2005 and Gwen uh, passed away at age 85 earlier this year, um, but the the library and the city of San Carlos greatly appreciates their contribution not only uh, this financial contribution but their their contribution as volunteers over the years that they were uh, residents of this city so thank you to that family. Great. Thank you. And yeah, I'll just uh, add on a little bit um, on, of course, the uh, the gas main break and fire inferno there in, in San Bruno. Just by c coincidence, actually, just recently, uh, a new public relations person uh, came on board for PG&E, our rep for our city. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, she took the initiative to contact the mayor, wanted to get together with me over a cup of coffee and, and talk. Uh, I responded to her request very quickly on Friday morning and said, yeah, we do need to get the talk and uh, would, would love to. And, of course, my interest uh, for City of San Carlos, is, of course, is uh, uh, there's, of course, many more questions than answers not to ask a lot of questions, but just the basic concept that we do need uh, our citizens of San Carlos and City Council, you know, a report eventually from her on what our situation is. Are, is there any risk? Uh, where are we? What are we doing Doing about it? Uh, I think we need to be patient with that. I think we need, need to let their time of their company uh, work with the site itself and with all the federal agencies and all the news media and everything that's going on. Uh, but, but eventually uh, I will be coming back uh, and owe it to the people of, of our city just to make sure 
uh, we reset and understand where we are because anything like that could happen in any city, uh, of course. So, so I will report on that further. And with that, anything else? Great. Thank you. Uh, we do have a, a proclamation to our Chamber of Commerce, those wonderful people that uh, do great things for our city and our businesses and have great mixes and uh, all sorts of functions. Uh, and so with that, we have uh, our president of the chamber, Judy Johnson, if you could join me and uh, I'll paraphrase a few items for a special uh, week here that we have for our city. It's not in this proclamation is, is the number of, of members we have. Uh, well, that might be in here. But what's not in the proclamation is how many small and special businesses we have uh, that have a tremendous amount of spirit. Like all of our citizens, uh, the other half of the city are businesses. And it's important uh, for them to do, to do as, as well. So with that, let me see. Yeah, this is working. Uh, let me uh, read you a few words here. And uh, I'm sure you'll be bringing this back to you. Your office? You still have a little wall space little in the chamber? OK, because I know you guys give, give a lot and have lots there on the wall. So this is uh, San Carlos Chamber of Commerce, the San Mateo County Chamber of Commerce Alliance, and joins in the local chamber week of September 20th through 24th, 2010. Whereas the San Carlos Chamber of Commerce, in conjunction with the Chamber of Commerce of San Mateo County, is scheduled to hold a countywide membership drive. Whereas all 13 chambers of commerce that form that alliance have been interested in raising awareness uh, across the country as to the vital role uh, respective chambers play for business community and government. Whereas each chamber will focus on membership development and um, efforts within the city boundaries. Whereas local chambers with the professional executives uh, will, let's see, um, and staff uh, and volunteer efforts work year-round for the communities to create strong economy, promote the community, promote networking opportunities, and represent the interest of business to government. And whereas during these difficult economic times, as we all know, uh, businesses should be reminded of many things that the Chamber does uh, for every day. The businesses are encouraged to join their local chambers and to attend the San Mateo County Business Expo on September 22nd this year at the San Mateo uh, County Events Center. So now I would proclaim uh, by Randy Royce, the mayor, and all of the city council, of course, that September 20th through 24th of this year is hereby declared joining the local chamber week for the city of of St. Carl's Chamber, the San Mateo County Chamber, Commerce Alliance, this dated 13th day of September 2010. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. So uh, next, we're moving on to item six. This is public comment. Uh, this, of course, is for items that are not on this evening's agenda. If anybody would be welcome to uh, to speak, come on up. I do have a speaker, one speaker card, uh, Pat Bell. And anybody else would like to speak, uh, come and get a little closer up to the front here. Thank you. Ms. Bell. Good evening. Pat Bell, San Carlos. Um, I recently learned that the library is going to be remodeled, I think during this fiscal year. And A, I want to know how much that's going to cost San Carlos. And B, why are we doing it now? Couldn't that wait two or three years until the economy bounces back? Given the draconian cuts we've made to everything else, worn out car carpet is ugly, but it's not a life and death thing. I just think it's... Uh, inappropriate to be spending a lot of money 
beautifying the library. I, Mr. Klein must have information about this. He's smirking, but anyway, I'd like information too. Okay, thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Public comment? Jeff Grace? Hey, welcome. Hey, nice thank white you. shirt. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure this is the right time to speak. I just um, have a comment on the consent calendar item, so you're going to public yeah, Wait till we get to those items, which is only seconds away. Mr. Rice? Yes. If I may, just through the chair, we usually don't respond to public comment, I understand, but as the uh, representative on the library JPA, what I will do is um, work with staff and with uh, library staff, and, and we will we'll report back on that item that Pat um, brought to our attention. Okay. Let me note that. Okay, anybody else? Okay, moving on to item seven, uh, the pre consent calendar. Uh, Mr. Grace, what is that line item? We'll make sure we pull that. Uh, it would be seven A through Z. How about uh, J? J. Okay. And let me turn it back over to City Council. Uh, any other items here? Mr. Mayor, I have a motion, please. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve uh, consent calendars items 7A through 7I. Second. Hey, okay, roll call. Councilmember Mond? Yes. Councilmember Grisilli is absent. Councilmember Brokart? Yes. Councilmember Klein? Yes. Mayor Royce? Yes. So 7J, uh, we'll talk about that right now. Uh, this is an item to authorize city manager to sign a settlement agreement with Save San Carlos Parks related to the Lower Highlands Field Renovation Synthetic Turf Project. Uh, with that, Jeff, you want to come up and speak first, and then we could sure. talk more about this? Then thank you. Thanks. Thank, uh, thank, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jeff Grace, San Carlos, California. Um, regarding this item 7J and the settlement with Save the Parks, San Carlos Parks Group, uh, this was part of closed session as well. Uh, I guess before I make comments, as was a uh, decision made in closed session regarding this item. Mr. Rubens, you want to proceed or not to proceed? The, the, um, the, the, uh, the closed session item was to discuss um, the settlement agreement itself. The, um, the decision on the settlement agreement is in open session. Um, it was originally put on the consent calendar. Uh, because the council is full, uh, very well aware of um, the history of this item and the the issues that been that are in the lawsuit, but this is this is an opportunity to talk about the settlement agreement um, and the decision is being made in in open session. Okay. I'm sure the chair, Mr. Mayor, would, wouldn't it be easier for Mr. Grace if we get the report first that outlines the settlement agreement and then we can have the comments? I mean, if you think that would be easier. Um, so that's, that's following me. I, mean, I, I, read, read the, I read the documents oh, okay. that were in the, um, uh, the website. Sure. Uh, yeah, so why don't we talk about no, no, this would be good, I think, for, for people on the web and on TV. Uh, uh, Mr. Weiss or, or Mr. Rubens, give a short summary. Oh, you'd, you'd be welcome to now, please. Okay. Um, Thank you. As Jeff, you'll uh, be up here three times tonight. Let me pull me on here. Um, as the public uh, might be aware, um, there was a lawsuit brought um, last year against the City of San Carlos arising out of the, the City Council's approval of um, the mitigated negative declaration and approval of the con turf conversion project at Highlands Park. Um, the litigation um, progressed and uh, in On August 17th, uh, Judge Murray Weiner issued a tentative statement of decision finding um, in favor of the city um, regarding the actual use of um, artificial turf, um, but the judge raised some issues regarding traffic um, that are set forth in her uh, tentative statement of decision. Um, immediately after the decision, the city was approached by the, um, uh, the Save San Carlos Parks Group, and uh, we began uh, to discuss resolving the, dis the disputes um, without um, any kind of a admission of fault, but with the eye towards um, re resolving disputes and ending the litigation. Um, the last 
two weeks we've been uh, negotiating with the Highlands Park, uh, Safe San Carlos Parks group and um, have reached um, a settlement that they have signed. The settlement agreement um, actually was just delivered, signed by the representative of the group this morning and that's why the whole settlement agreement wasn't in the packet. Uh, but it has um, several elements um, to designed to address um, some of the issues that we believe uh, were raised by the judge in the tentative statement of decision, but clarifying um, other issues that um, revolve around um, the use of the park and the, the pro quote, project field as it's stated in the settlement agreement. The, the Basically the issues, um, most of the issues fit, focus on uh, traffic and parking and safety. And so I'll just read it's very in very summary form what the terms of the settlement are. Um, this is the first item is something that the City Council already decided to do earlier this year was to change um, and specify the infill material for the artificial turf field from um, and eliminating the potential for use of crumb rubber. So the settlement agreement just confirms that and requires uh, organic infill material. <coughs> the um, the settlement agreement also provides that the city's uh, capital improvement plan for the parks include a line item for replacement and uh, and or repair of the project field, and that's the artificial turf field at Highlands Park. It's, it doesn't require that, that that be funded, but it does require that there be a line item sort of as a reminder um, that that replacement is going to be needed at some point. Um, the other, uh, the parking and traffic improvements include some restricted parking on the east side of Aberdeen um, near the, um, what's described in the settlement agreement as parking lot B, and that's the parking lot nearest rotary field on the playground. There is a, um, uh, some day, some just, it's weekend restricted parking only between 8 and 6, um, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. on game days to mitigate against um, people parking in front of those homes and um, to discourage parents from dropping off their children in front of those homes and having them cross a busy street to enter the park. Um, there's going to be some signs notifying um, drivers of the that they should um, be courteous to the neighborhood and park in the in the parking lots and not on the street. There'll be two speed humps installed on Aberdeen Drive, um, one just after the first driveway where the tennis courts are, or described as Lot A, and one just after the entrance to uh, Lot. Excuse me. One before the entrance to Lot A, that where the tennis courts are, and one just after the entrance to Lot B, and that's to the effort there is to slow down traffic, um, again primarily for safety reasons, and also to, to um, allow people when they get to that first speed hump to see the uh, the first parking lot. One of the themes of the settlement agreement is to eliminate some of the impacts on the, 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 the parking lot that's most popular and move it to where there's ample parking at, near the tennis courts. There'll be a stop sign installed um, on Glasgow Lane. Um, right now that's an uncontrolled intersection, so for safety reasons, a stop sign there um, seemed preferable, especially since there's some line of sight issues that um, the, the neighborhood identified. There'll be some parking spaces in the parking lots devoted to um, passenger loading and unloading. Um, we're going to accomplish that by having a five-minute parking limitation on, on those spaces. There will be some designated carpool spaces, and carpools will be defined as two or more players in a car. We're going to um, red stripe the entrance to Lot B. The Lot B driveway right now is being used um, by parking um, for parking, which further restricts access and creates some unsafe um, conditions, so it's going to be red striped on both sides. Um, we're going to have some additional signage to assist um, field users in the most efficient use. We've got a modified practice schedule to address one of the issues raised in the tentative decision about peak um, rush hour periods um, during the fall soccer practice, so we've got a staggered field concept schedule that will um, reduce uh, trips during the peak periods. Um, we've got some limitation on the starting of games on Saturdays, um, excuse me, starting of the arrival of, uh, let me restate that, I want to read it exactly the way it says. Um, the field use agreements will be amended 
to specify that no games shall begin before 8 a.m. and coaches will be required to notify their players to arrive no earlier than 15 minutes before an 8 a.m. game or 45 minutes before their scheduled game. So the, the 15 minute rule just applies to the to the first game of the weekend. It does not include setup. So if the field needs to be set up, this is just addressed to the players. Um, there will be a um, some limitation on the 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 uh, hours of use, the total hours will be 3,000 hours per year for organized sports. And there will be a, an online uh, calendar that helps um, ensure the efficient use of the field so people know where they're supposed to go, things of that nature. There's an attorney fee payment. Um, CEQA has a, what they call a private attorney general aspect to it. Um, there's, um, what, although the city's not admitting any uh, fault um, as part of the settlement, there's a payment of attorney's fees and costs to the plaintiff's attorney of $84,612.23. The uh, court uh, reserves jurisdiction, and there's a process contained in the settlement agreement that allows the city to, to amend um, the use of the project field um, by em employing a CEQA process. The agreement also has a full release of all claims and uh, includes a provision that um, this will be um, submitted to the judge uh, for approval and the court will have continuing jurisdiction over the interpretation of its terms. Hey, anything else, sir, Mr. Rubens? That's basically a summary of the settlement agreement. Um, uh, we're recommending that the City Council approve the settlement agreement. Okay, great. So, Mr. Grace, uh, please come and give us any thoughts and advice. All right. We're trying to get this done this time. Um, I said I want to see the Highlands Park project move forward. I've been living this thing for, it seems like, for 15 years. So uh, nobody wants to see this move forward more than I do. Um, and I understand we need to sign the settlement agreement. I mean, because if we don't sign the settlement agreement, we're not going to move on with the project. We're not going to be able to use the park. So, um, unfortunately, it is what it is, I guess. Some of the items that are in the settlement agreement are items that have been discussed going back as far as when I was commissioner of soccer in 1995. So uh, the traffic issues, you know, we've always been trying to address those. Some of the others that were just highlighted are somewhat disturbing, but, I mean, I assume a lot of work's been gone into the settlement agreement and to rehash this again is probably not going to do anybody any good. Um, but what, what is particularly disturbing to me is the payment that we are going to have to make of $85,000 plus $10,000 to the court for what I consider to have been a trivial uh, lawsuit from this, what they call themselves, the Save the Sa San Carlos Parks Group. I mean, they are hardly anything but Save the San Carlos Parks they have just siphoned off a significant amount of money from our part funds to go to lawyers. And no offense, Greg, <laughs> but um, I think we uh, had better uses of that fu those funds than to pay a off a lawsuit. I feel as though we've been held hostage. I feel like this is the baykeeper thing all over again. You know, to, to get these people to go away, we have to pay them off to go away. And it just does not sit right with me whatsoever. Um, I could go on and on about the Save the San Carlos Park group. I know the people. Um, you know, I, I don't feel they acted in good faith. I don't feel they acted in a cooperative manner. They acted what was in their best interest and not the citizens of San Carlos' best interests. Um, and what's really disturbing that I read in the settlement agreement that there appeared to be funds in Measure G, if I read this correctly, to pay for this lawsuit and to pay for legal fees and going back to what the original intent of Measure G was, and I find it very difficult to believe that Measure G funds were legal or can be legally used or intended to be used to pay off lawsuits. I think we need to find another place to find those funds to pay these people off and pay legal fees. But I think Measure G was very specific as to what the use of it was, and it was, I don't believe it was to pay off lawsuits unless there's something in the measure that allows for this to occur. And um, finally, you know. This was one group, and I don't know how organized this group was. Obviously, they're pretty well organized. A bunch of smart guys up there. How are we assured that there can't be a different group of people that can come forward sometime in the future and try to hold us hostage again for a situation just like this up at Highlands? Thank you. Great.
Mr. Grace, thank, thank you very much. Uh, maybe, uh, Mr. Rubens, you want to just give a little more clarification, or Mr. Maldi, on the capitalization costs, the legal and Measure G, just to make sure we're, there's no question on that? Well, the settlement agreement doesn't specify the, the funding source for the, um, for the payment of the settlement. I think what the staff report talked about was um, that me Measure G funds are going to have to be used for the field. They're not specified for the attorney's fees in any way. Good. Okay. Well, Mr. Grace, uh, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, as, as you commented, uh, at my, everybody in San Carlos is, is paying for it. The good news that it's done are very close to being done. We, we will have turf. Uh, you could remind the children it's costing them an extra 50 bucks the first time they play in that field. Uh, but other than that, it's all really, really good news for the city of San Carlos. So appreciate your comments. Thank you. Uh, we have a speaker, uh, Pat Bell. Are you going to talk about turf? Welcome. I just have a different take on this lawsuit question. I think San Carlos is too ready to dig in its heels and get sued. I think if you put that same amount of effort into settling it before it gets to this point, you'd save a lot of legal fees. And uh, we, we can't afford to be paying other people's lawyers. This is, you know, same thing, he mentioned save the bay, or bay keepers, whatever they are. I'm so glad they did that, because San Carlos wouldn't have done what's right if bay keepers hadn't. Sued you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak on this topic? Great, thank you. Uh, with that, any discussion from council before we take a vote on this? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gokart, oh, please. I just have... Mr. Gokart, first? I'm sorry. Okay, that's, fine. that's fine. I go with the way I look. Yeah. <laughs> please. So um, I just wanted to comment, since so much has been said on this item, I, I wasn't expecting to say anything, uh, being that it was a consent calendar item, but I res respect that it's been pulled and Mr. Grace's uh, words on it. Um, and I, I agree in terms of uh, to the settlement, settlement agreement, what's in here was, of course, part of the closed session uh, negotiations and discussions. Um, I also agree that it's unfortunate that we're uh, having to dish out the, the money that we are. It could have been more. It actually uh, could have been a much higher figure. Um, it, just to, to clarify, there was money in this project, budgeted into this project to uh, take care of legal fees and other things. And Mr. Rubens is correct that the just the project cost overall have gone up, and one could say that Measure G funds are being used for you know turf just as just as well because it's all part of the project and part of the cost of the project. Um, but but I do understand the the concern that that you speak of. Uh, I'll be voting in favor of this, but I, I, I would just say that um, you know when this project was approved, there were, and, and we went this direction at the time. Uh, there was another council member here, Mr. Davids, and he and I both voted against this project for this very reason, because we knew there was going to be a lawsuit. We didn't want to uh, spend the city's money in that direction, and that's why uh, he and I were. We're trying to go in a different direction for a project at a different site. Um, that's also why when I was uh, the mayor, uh, you know, we had a meeting, if you'll remember, back at the youth center. And we went through a whole process, and it was determined at that time that we would try to do something with the schools. And sites were picked uh, to, do, to go that direction. Uh, unfortunately, working with the school district uh, or, you know, talking with the school district didn't work out that way, and uh, those projects didn't happen, and here we are today. Thank you. Mr. Klein? Okay. Um, just a couple things. Um, I agree with Councilman Grokot where it said we knew going forward that we were going to get sued over this, but that is unfortunately becoming the place of doing business in government. If you're going to do something and someone doesn't agree with it, they're going to sue you. Um, and that's just something we have to factor into these costs. We, what wasn't mentioned was the fact that we spent a lot of staff time and there was a lot of our attorney's time. That's also part of that figure. It's not just the $95,000 or so. There, there's a great deal amount of more on that. And to respond to one of the things said in public comment, um, they don't sue us 
They sued as a council. They sued us as a community. So when you say they sued you, that's not technically true. This is all of our money. So let's be real about that. The city council, yeah, the city, well, no, I wasn't responding to you, Mr. Grace. I was responding to another public comment. Um, none of us are going to write a check for this. This comes out of the big pocket of the city of San Carlos. So there's no you, there's no us. This is a community. So when someone sues what the city has done, they're suing all of us. So we just need to be real about that. And it's easy to point fingers and say this was your decision. It's coming out of your pocketbook, but it's coming out of the collective pocketbook. So that's it. And I'll be voting in favor of this because it's the price of doing business. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll make just the briefest of comments. Uh, this lawsuit uh, was filed roughly a few minutes after we did the vote. Um, I have not made any comments about this because it is still pending litigation. Uh, and it's inappropriate uh, from my perspective for a city council member to speak on this topic. Uh, because our first duty is to protect the interests of the city. Um, hopefully when this thing is done, I'll get to vent my spleen. Uh, until then, trust me, I'm swallowing pretty hard and keeping things in check. But with that, I'll move approval of item 7J. Okay. I, uh, with that, can I hear a motion then? Um, I just if I anybody else like to speak on this, by the way, first before we move? Sorry? Mr. Ahmad already moved. I made the motion. I'll, so I'll second it. Thank you. Burkhardt. Councilman Ahmad? Yes. Councilman Burkhardt? Yes. Councilman Bacline? Yes. Mayor Royce? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming to speak on this. Uh, reports, moving on to item, agenda item eight, our reports to council. Uh, Mr. Weiss? And Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we've had a number of inquiries over the last few days uh, regarding uh, the city's response to the situation in San Bruno. Okay. And we thought it would just be appropriate to indicate that there has been a number of mutual aid responses, uh, starting with the event that evening. Um, certainly the police department uh, assigned personnel immediately uh, to assist in that event. Uh, the fire department did as well. Uh, I think the police had six sworn personnel uh, that first day for the next. Uh, the chief and uh, the commander were on call over the weekend. Uh, the fire chief was also involved, fire marshal, uh, a couple of engines. The hazmat team uh, was involved in providing response. Uh, even our public information officer, Mr. Mora, was uh, on call as uh, in a mutual aid capacity uh, for mutual aid. And I should also mention our city attorney is working uh, up in uh, San Bruno now uh, as an interim city attorney, I think is the title, and, and so he's been involved. Uh, so a number of uh, different city personnel have been involved, and undoubtedly, uh, as time passes here, we'll do a tabletop exercise within the city of San Carlos to uh, glean from the people that were involved what went right, what, uh, what didn't go right, and what we can improve upon so that we're better prepared in San Carlos should an event similar to this occur here. Uh, in addition to that, I should mention that the Public Works Director has been in touch with PG&E, just as, as you have, Mr. Mayor, with respect to uh, the, the location of lines and the maintenance schedule for lines. Uh, uh, they are inundated with calls right now from other communities that are looking for very similar information. And once we have that information or what information can be shared, uh, we will share that with the community as well. Uh, we, we thought uh, that it would be appropriate, though, tonight just to make note of those uh, those events. Uh, uh, Commander Robbins, uh, Gary Fouth was here earlier. He may have had to leave, but Mark is here. Uh, Brian is here. So the people that were involved on behalf of the city directly, the city attorney obviously, are here uh, tonight if you have uh, any direct questions or specific questions for them as well. Thank you. Questions? Um, Mr. Fine? Mr. Mayor, uh, just one, and, and Mr. Weiss uh, touched on it, and it's great that the Public Works Director is going to be working on that. We do have two gas transmission lines that run through San Carlos. One runs up, one runs up Britain and one runs down Industrial. Um, so I know, and they're slated to, I know, I know now through a court order, I believe, all the transmission lines are slated to be checked. So whenever that is, if we can get a report on when that's going to be done, and I understand it's not going to happen for months, even getting a report because they have other things to deal with right now, but getting a report on when it's going to be done and then a report after the fact of the, uh, how those lines are functioning, if there's any need of repairs, we would like just to keep on our, um, on our heads so we know moving forward what, what that looks like. Just to that point, we, we've looked at our records. We understand that there was a maintenance done in 2004, I believe, uh, for the Bredon and, and Old County Road lines. So uh, we are checking those records as well at City Hall, and, and we'd be happy to provide a report as more information is available. Super. Anything else? 
or not? Um, well, no, I just have one, one final thing. Yeah. First of all, to you know, our, our police officers, our sworn officers of police and fire, you know, it's phenomenal that we have this mutual aid ability where we can go and help people. People need to understand what mutual aid means, though. Um, when we do send people, especially from our fire department, it does mean that our uh, service levels drop in town. And this is something that is just, again, price of doing business. Um, we have to help out our neighbors because our neighbors help us. So when we send people to San Bruno, it doesn't mean we close a couple stations. But it's usually for a short amount of time and we're able to handle that through other mutual aid aspects. And our neighbors do it just as much for us as we do it for them. So it's a great thing that our county has been able to come together and have all those aspects and to share resources, especially in the time of need, because there's no city in the county that can handle an emergency like this on their own. So it's great that we can lean on each other and, you know, we'll, we'll see that move forward for hopefully decades. But it's been a great thing this county was able to do because there are areas in this country that don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Mr. Mott? Uh, Mr. Mott, I would uh, like to just report that uh, we do have within San Mateo County a council of cities. Uh, that has That group is made up of the elected officials from all the cities uh, within San Mateo County that group has been active in trying to lend support to San Bruno. Uh, we've had people out there uh, and have been in contact with the good folks in San Bruno, and uh, the response from San Mateo County has been uh, quick, rapid, and, and, and it has been working. Uh, for the f folks on the San Carlos Police Department, I know that uh, speaking to the San Bruno elected officials, they were very grateful for the support that they received from St. Carlos Police Department. Uh, there were a couple of incidents that uh, did involve uh, St. Carlos Police Department uh, officers in, uh, I'll just say it was an incident and I'll let, uh, if the police care to elaborate, that's great, but uh, their help was absolutely needed and they were there uh, in force and, and really did help out. Uh, the police department, I'm sorry, the fire department uh, was exemplary. They helped set up the command structure at the Tamperan Mall, and uh, we've had some guys out there for a number of days providing support. Uh, but more than that, I would also want to point out that uh, our city staff, uh, Brian Mora, and, and our city has been lending help to the citizens of San Bruno. Uh, there is a lot of infrastructure. There's a lot of legal questions about what's supposed to happen, and uh, we've been pitching in, and this has been a tremendous uh, point uh, of cooperation. There are two things I would like to to bring out, Mr. Mayor. One, uh, I think everybody is going to be looking at the PG&E lines with a great deal of scrutiny. Uh, at this point, uh, a PG&E on audit, uh, from my perspective, is probably not going to hold as much weight as I would like it to. Uh, so I would like to see either from uh, this level, a county level, or possibly even a state level, if there's an independent audit that can be done and verified. And if we need to go up to Sacramento to force that issue, uh, I'll be in a car very shortly. Uh, the second part it was somewhat interesting that a few days before this occurred, I was in Director Lyle's office speaking about disaster planning and disaster planning communications. Um, and this came up very quickly. So at some point, uh, I would like to agendize uh, possibly more of an informal discussion for City Council, more of where our disaster planning is and, and sort of what state we are in. Uh, we do have a very active CERT program. We are doing those things, but I think uh, it's on top of people's minds, and this is a good time to go ahead and review it, make certain that everybody is familiar, and, and we can move forward with those plans. Okay. Mr. Droka? Just uh, one item uh, on this uh, topic, and that is um, fo folks may be wondering, you know, how they can get involved and how they can help. And uh, I know as a Lions Club member that the uh, – the, uh, Lions Club in in San Bruno is very active, and one of their uh, council members is a Lions member, and so there's been response there. I suppose uh, you know we have some Rotary members. I, I suppose all the service clubs are, are being involved in that, and so I would just say to the community, I, I know you can always go through the Red Cross, but if you want to do something that feels a little bit more local and where you, you feel maybe a little bit more secure about your funds actually going directly to helping uh, victims of this fire is simply to contact any one of uh, our service clubs, whether it's Lions, Rotary, or Kiwanis, and uh, you can give them a check and just put fire in the memo, and they'll see to it that that money gets used to uh, help out families who've been displaced from their homes. Yeah, and I'll just uh, conclude, echo all the comments that have been made. Uh, um, this 
situation is a little different. Uh, I, I guess I've lost some confidence in our world recovery of major uh, c c catastrophes and earthquakes. You know, we, we know where they've been around. Where we've had a lot in the last year, year and a half. And uh, it's impossible to get care and even water and, and supplies and, and so forth. Uh, this is almost as major, but it's in a very, very small area. But I was very impressed in all these professional teams, and how organized it is, and, and all the giving that has come with San Mateo County, uh, the involvement of cities, of county, of state government, federal g government, uh, uh, from, from aid to spaghetti feeds to loans. I mean, there is stuff happening this weekend. Most of it's orchestrated already on what's going to be done. They're going to be w w working with the cause over the next year. But the care and the love and giving back to the people, uh, it's tremendous how this county, local county, have all worked together to uh, to make this happen. And as Matt and Mr. Wilcott said, there's been, uh, many ways for our people to get involved. Uh, my last comment is the news media has been exceptional. Uh, they actually are a good source. The TV and the newspapers, uh, if you go to their websites and read their articles, uh, there will be all sorts of of information out there on, on how to get in, in, involved because, there, of course, there's a lot more work to, to do. Um, so with that, uh, entertain a motion. Hold on, just work for Oh, we don't, oh, for, on Jay? I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. Oh, that's uh, information. In, information, okay. So, you already spoke on that? I don't know. She wants public comment. Would you like to speak on that? Have Pat Bell coming up and speaking uh, again on item uh, 8, reports to council. I just ask everyone to remember the poor people who are still in the burn unit in, in St. Francis in the city. Uh, there's no place worse in a hospital than the burn unit. And those families are undoubtedly living in the waiting room of the burn unit. I've lived in hospital waiting rooms and it's a horrible thing. I've never lived in the burn unit waiting room, and I'm eternally grateful. But those people have years ahead of them of incredible pain, emotional and physical. They have to be sedated every time they have a treatment. And it, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. But the news covers the splashy stuff. This isn't splashy, but it's going to go on forever. So please keep them in your thoughts as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll move on to agenda item 9A. We have one item. Uh, this is a public hearing consideration of resolution to approve the engineering report, uh, confirm the assessment diagram and order a levy of assessments for fiscal year 2010-11 for the Polgus Creek Levy Improvement Assessment District. And Mr. Wild, before you get going, uh, let me, uh, this is a formal public hearing, I believe, Christine, I need to read a few of these things here just to make sure that everybody understands what we're doing. Um, this public hearing, uh, in the conclusion of the ballot proceeding, will allow property owners in areas Skyway Road and Shoreway Road in the city of San Carlos to decide if an assessment should be approved to, pro to provide funding for the proposed Pulgas Creek Levy Improvement Assessment d d d District. This public hearing that we're having right now starting uh, gives property owners and residents another opportunity to obtain the information about the proposed assessment. It also provides the opportunity for property owners and residents to proceed with any additional input or comments uh, to the City of San Carlos. After the end of the public input portion of this hearing, uh, the balloting period will be closed. So in summary, what we're doing is we'll get a report from Mr. Weil, uh, staff report on the proposed improvements. Uh, open up a public hearing. We'll get public comments. Uh, we'll be asking you for those items. Anybody can speak or any questions you have on this item. Uh, after that, then staff will report back on and answer any uh, questions uh, any, or legal counsel, any of those items that may come up. And after that, then we will have a final call for ballots. Uh, after the call of ballots, public input portion of the hearing will be closed. Uh, there will be a recess to allow for tabulation of the ballots, and then we will announce those. Uh, Ms. Bolin, anything I missed there? 
Yeah, you got it exactly right. Exactly right. I'm a good Thank reader, you. huh? Good. Yeah. Thank you. So with that, Mr. Weil, please, uh, your staff report. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. I'll, I'll be brief. We've gone over this project several times before. Just a brief overview. Um, what you have there is uh, an aerial view of Redwood Shores, and uh, Highway 101 is running up and down on the left side of the page there, and the San Francisco Bay is to the right. And in color, around Redwood Shores is a system of levees and, uh, that, that protect, basically, that land from the bay. And um, if that weren't there, the levee weren't there, uh, and, and, and storm events, the bay could basically fill that area. Or if there's a break in the levee, the, that area fills up like a bathtub. Um, so that's what this is designed to prevent, pretend, prevent is, is flooding of that area. And the federal government, in updating its flood insurance rate maps, recently looked at this area and said, um, to keep this from flooding, you need to uh, raise the levee by about two feet, uh, more or less. And um, and so Redwood City, the San Carlos, City of San Carlos, and the San Mateo County have all cooperated since the, the ownership of this levy has three different parts. Our part is the little red part, of like 2% of the whole system, that right there at the end of Skyway Road. And um, so ours is a very small part of the whole system. And at a cost of about $180,000, that levy was raised for about two feet. Most of the cost actually wasn't the construction, but all the permitting and uh, and the certification and the engineering, but that's about what it costs to do that. And so, um, what we're here tonight, tonight to do is to ask, we've, we've balloted property owners to um, vote on an assessment to recover the cost of raising that, and then, importantly, to um, fund the ongoing operation and maintenance of that small piece of levy there. Because unless that operation and maintenance is covered, Really, the levy can't be certified as meeting the criteria. If it can't be certified, then it's still a bathtub. And, and so it, people behind the levy um, would be forced to pay flood insurance. The, people, the properties that were balloted are all the properties east of 101 within the city of San Carlos. So um, along Skyway Road and along Shoreway Road, basically. Are the, are the locations. There's 14 different properties, less property owners than that. And the ballots went out after you had a hearing, uh, or you approved the ballots about a month and a half ago. And uh, so we're here to get, to get the ballots tonight and, and to consider uh, any requests for information or uh, any public hearing, anything that comes out of the public hearing before acting on this assessment district. What you'll have, what you're being asked to do basically is approve the final version of the engineer's report, which says this work is needed, this is why it's needed, this is what it's going to cost, this is how the costs are spread. If you do approve that engineer's report, then that, that levy of assessments would then go to each property owner. It, it, by approving that, you're asking the county to collect that on behalf of the city. The capital costs of the assessments go on for 10 years. And then the oper operations and maintenance goes, which is a much smaller number, goes on in perpetuity. Great. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Mr. Kirkup? I have one. Um, the, one of the properties there would be the sand trans? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And I, I, Mr. Romano, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable or anything, but I, you sit on the sand trans board, and I'm not sure, and Greg could speak to this, if there's any... I would hope there wasn't any conflict. Doesn't seem like there would be, but I just want to actually. I'll, I'll go ahead and speak to that, um, okay, uh, yeah. Mr. Kirkott. I, I uh, actually disqualified myself from that vote uh, because I wanted to vote on it here. Okay. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, San Trans did take an action to approve uh, voting for this. Okay. I was just looking out for your. Yeah, you know, I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so right before we get to the public comment, I do want to remind you uh, that the ballots did need to be sum submitted by the end of the public comment. If you don't have a ballot or lost it, uh, you could get another one here from Ms. Bowen. So please come on up if you would like another one that you don't have. Um, so with that, let's move into uh, public comment because uh, this is the time for anybody that is interested in speaking, commenting, questions, anything. We, we welcome you to come up. On 
Mr. McClure, please. The, uh, just before Ms. McClure, you speak, mm -hmm. uh, just a clarification. The ballots that we're collecting are for the property owners affected, not for St. Carlos in general, correct? Correct. correct. It's the property owners. Thank you. Just wanted to verify. Brian McClure, Brian McClure, St. Carlos. Uh, I just have a question. On, um, I was out at the uh, room at the end of Seaport. Uh, last week, and I'm talking to the a property owner developer of that private marina in Redwood City, and he mentioned the wicking method that he used there that he felt that has been very successful in Holland, um, as opposed to always levies or maybe in conjunction with. And I just wondered if that had been investigated at all. Mr. Wilder, want to? Answer that now. Well, I'm, I'm sorry about the noise here. I need to All right. um, cap someone on my left or right here. <laughs> this, I only know this much about the wicking method, but it's usually, I think, used for filling land. So you, I saw this used in, in Nevada where basically the, uh, put down a wick, it draws moisture out of the, uh, the, the bay mud, and then you were able to fill on top of it, and then you would, instead of diking off the area, you fill the area. So this would go back to what, when Redwood Shores was originally built, and that wasn't found to be economically feasible at that time. The places I've seen it are used are, are smaller areas, like just a shopping center in the middle of a, of a, uh, of a mud area. I, I, is, that, is that the context? I, I, think that, I think that's right. Good, good. And I'm asking you to respond right away. I think there may be very few questions here as why. Anybody else? Public comment? Any other questions on this public hearing? Mr. Mayor, we'll be public hearing. Public hearing. Second. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The public uh, comment section is closed. Do we do balloting now, Ms. Bowen? I have to take a break. So how much uh, time are you needed? We only have uh, a few ballots, and it should be less than five minutes. Less than five? Okay, let's, uh, the clock in the show is five minutes, too. Let's recess until 8 p.m. We'll reconvene. <laughs>
Do we need a number two pencil? The right one. Yeah, because then we've got a resolution. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, let's reconvene here. Uh, I believe the tabulation has been com completed by our city clerk, Ms. Fallon. Yes, it Can did you, pass. Uh, give us the results. It did pass. We had um, five votes for yes, one for no. And it's a basically simple, simple dollar majority, so it did pass. Okay, majority of the number of votes received? That's not it. Can, you or it? The, can we, I want to make sure we understand the, yeah. the approval here. Tax measure passed. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, Thomas Bright, though, with the CSI, uh, not C. SCI consulting group. I'm sorry. The um, the voting is weighted on the dollar amount of the proposed assessment. Okay. So um, those property owners who have more of a proposed assessment do have a higher uh, higher stake in the vote. Uh, either way, by a by a majority of the votes cast and by a majority of the votes weighted by the proposed assessment amount, the um, the uh, balloting does appear to, to pass. Great. Thank you. Okay, with that, then, uh, any discussion before I take a vote on this? Okay, can I hear a uh, resolution? Approval of the resolution number 2010 Resolution of the City Council of the City of San Carlos approving engineer's report, confirming diagram and assessment, and ordering levy of assessments within Pulgas Creek Levy Improvement Assessment District for fiscal year 2010 2011. Second. Okay, uh, first and second. Roll call, please. Councilman Bernard? Yes. Councilman Boca? Yes. Councilman Bacline? Yes. Mayor Royce? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. And Christine, uh, Ms. Bowen, thank you for all the organization there. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. On that. Okay, moving on to uh, agenda item uh, 10, new business. We have two items. Uh, the first is uh, uh, adopting our San Carlos st strategic plan, which uh, City Council and staff met a few weeks ago. Second item is dealing with a change order for interstate uh, grading and paving. We'll be doing that second. So, Mr. Mulvey, uh, take us through 10A again, the st San Carlos st st strategic plan. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. Jeff Mulvey, Administrative Services Director. Uh, on August 27th, the City Council met with the City Manager, the Department Directors, uh, City Clerk, and uh, uh, several members of the public who were in attendance uh, to conduct the 10th, 6th month strategic plan update uh, for the City of San Carlos. Yeah, uh, uh, in terms of... Um, oops. Uh, in terms of what was done during the meeting, the, the uh, group reviewed the city's uh, mission statement. Uh, in the past, we've had meetings uh, specific or topics during the meeting specific to uh, updating or uh, um, actually creating this, the city's mission statement. This time, we just reviewed it. The city's mission statement is that the city of San Carlos provides high-quality services and facilities in a fiscally sustainable responsive and friendly manner to foster a safe and healthy community. Uh, we went on to review the city's vision statement, which is by 2012, the city of San Carlos will be a vibrant and thriving home and destination for individuals, families, and businesses. After that, we took a look at the city's core values, and these are not in priority order. Uh, they include the city of San Carlos values fiscal responsibility and sustainability, protecting our environment, strategic thinking and planning for the future, high ethical standards, community involvement, high quality customer service, and a strong sense of community and public safety. The city has a number of three-year goals. These goals were uh, uh, identified starting in the year 2009, so uh, we're a little bit more than about halfway through uh, the, the three-year goals here. Uh, nevertheless, we reviewed those. The goals uh, remain the same, which are to plan for and implement long-term financial sustainability, provide effective and sustainable public safety, 
manage uh, effectively the infrastructure and facilities of the city, enhance community awareness, involvement, and engagement, and preserve and enhance our distinct community character. The city developed uh, approximately 30 six-month objectives to help move the city towards achieving its three-year uh, goals that were just described. Plan for and implement long-term financial sustainability. The three-year goal uh, will uh, include <clears throat> a report to the city council on the outcomes of the uh, county city manager shared services retreat by uh, November 15, 2010. Uh, by uh, December 1st, 2010, we'll develop a consistent branding image, marketing messages, and marketing materials for business attraction, increased retail sales, and all city materials and outreach correspondence, and pre present to the City Council for action. <clears throat> by December 15th, present to the City Council the City's unfunded liabilities and recommend to the City Council for consideration strategies to address the city's financial obligations to our past and present employees. By February 15, 2011, complete a salary and benefit reduction proposals for all labor groups and present to the city council for action. By February 15, 2011, present a contract to the city council for action for a branding implement, implementation consultant. By October 15, 2010, uh, and this is uh, moving on to the second goal, provide effective and sustainable public safety. By October 15, 2010, present the consultant's report to the City Council on fire and emergency services and recommend to the City Council for action the issuance of an RFP, request for a proposal for providing fire and emergency services to San Carlos after October 2011. By October 15, 2010, present to the City Council a report on community outreach regarding consolidation of police services with the Sheriff. By January 15, 2011, coordinate the presentation of proposals by prospective providers for fire and emergency services. By February 15, 2011, hold a disaster training exercise for the CERT team. Continuing with the public safety goal, by February 15, 2011, present to the City Council for consideration options on providing fire and emergency services in San Carlos after October 2011. A future objective without a date yet assigned to it, uh, provide an update to the City Council on the transition of police services to the Sheriff's Office. Manage effectively the infrastructure and facilities. The six month uh, objectives include by uh, September 15th, present to the City Council for action a revised sewer ordinance to meet the terms of the Baykeeper Consent Decree. By October 1st, 2010, present to the City Council for action a, spe a specification for a citywide cleaning and inspection of the sewer collection system to meet the terms of the Baykeeper Consent Decree. By November 1st, 2010, present to the City Council for action a consulting contract for an ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. By February 1st, 2011, complete flow monitoring of the sewer collection system to meet the terms of the Baykeeper Consent Decree. Continuation of the Manage Effectively the Infrastructure and Facilities Goal. By February 15, 2011, begin populating the Land Logic Assessment Management Database. By February 15, 2011, develop and present to the City Council for action a contract for a trails master plan. By February 15, 2011, present to the City Council for action a contract for a permitting software system in the building division, building and planning. Future objective, present to the City Council for direction a feasibility report regarding the formation of a stormwater utility, which would include incentives to reduce flow and reduce water runoff to help prevent flooding. Manage effectively the infrastructure and facilities continued uh, with two more future objectives. Present to the City Council for action a budget proposal for a transit needs survey. Present, present to the City Council for action a budget proposal for a pedestrian transportation plan. Enhance community awareness, involvement, and engagement. We have an ongoing uh, six-month objective to inform the community of high-speed rail workshops, events, and report to the City Council on the results of the community outreach. 
uh, by November 1st, 2010, inform the City Council of the implications, i.e. pros and cons of high-speed rail on San Carlos and other peninsula communities with a special emphasis on adjacent cities. By February 15, 2011, develop and present to the City Council an outreach plan to involve service clubs and nonprofits in addressing unmet community needs. The Enhanced Community Awareness Goal continued. By February 15, 2011, investigate the website, redesign and enhancements and recommended options to the City Council for direction. By February 15, 2011, update the community regarding major development projects, i.e. Wheeler Plaza, Plaza and the Transit Village. Our, our three-year goal to preserve and enhance our distinct community character. By December 1st, 2010, present to the Redevelopment Agency for Action a facade improvement grant program for local businesses. By February 15th, 2011, hold at least two community workshops as well as informational meetings with various stakeholder groups regarding the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance Update. By February 15th, 2011, get feedback from the community on the San Carlos High Speed Rail segment and share it with the Peninsula Rail Program. By February 15, 2011, prepare and present to the Redevelopment Agency and the City Council for Action a funding proposal for a gateway design as defined and located in the General Plan Improvement and Implementation Plan. That is the entirety of the City's uh, six-month strategic plan. Uh, Three-year goals and six-month objectives uh, were asked by uh, our our uh, uh, strategic plan uh, leader, Marilyn Schneider, to read this into the record, which is why I've read all these uh, goals and objectives for you verbatim this evening. So our facilitator will be uh, pleased with that. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have or document any, document any changes you might make uh, to the plan tonight, uh, as well as I think some of the other department directors, the city manager who are here as well. Great, thank you. thank you. Before any questions, uh, anybody in the public uh, have any comments on this? Welcome to. Okay. Any comments from council? Mr. Mudd? I was going to move approval. Okay. I'll, I'll move approval of the uh, strategic plan. Second. Okay, we have a first and second. Roll call, please. Councilman Mudd? Yes. Councilman Grocott? Yes. Councilman Klein? Yes. Mayor Royce? Uh, yes. We have one more item. Uh, 10B is consideration of authorizing a change order with interstate uh, grading paving in an amount of $111,000 for replacement of all drain lines for the Highlands Field re renovation. Mr. Weil? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Council members, be real quick here. Okay, just I um, wanted to show you the condition of the existing drainage system. Uh, I'm going to run through these pictures real quick. The uh, the pipe material that's in the field right now was not the way it was originally planned to be. It was intended to be a solid styrene pipe, and instead it's a corrugated plastic pipe. It has less strength and, uh, than, than originally it should have been. Um, and then significantly the trench construction was not per the plans, and the filter fabric does not wrap around the pipe, which means that the, the drain rock that surrounds the pipe is contaminated with sand. I'll show you that in a minute. We found various deficiencies in, in this. Um, we found debris and sediment in the, in the pipe. Pipes deformed, and we found some punctures and cracks. Here's a, a, a you get a sense of the deformation and then the debris and gravel. This was even after cleaning it. It's one thing about the corrugated pipe is it's difficult difficult to clean. Um, here again, you get a better picture of the oval shape of that of the pipe and. To, you know, when a pipe is flattened like this, it loses some of its uh, hydraulic efficiency, and this is kind of on its way toward collapse. So we're concerned that as the contractor places drain rock and, and works with the, uh, to compact it over these pipes, further damage could be done. Uh, the contractor is responsible for the damage, but then there's always the chance that after he's done and the one-year maintenance period is done, maybe Maybe there's a there's uh, there's work that collapses and it's 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 a long term kind of problem. So we want to really avoid that. Um, the the um, new system is going to have well, this is the main that runs 
the whole length of the field that actually carries water from Stadium Field on down through Lower Highlands. And then coming to and off of this are laterals that are perforated and collect water from uh, ridges up in the fields. And these, this is an, a lateral that comes in from the side. And uh, so this was basically just punched through a hole in the pipe. What we would do with the change order is put a T in and T this in. It would be a smooth connection instead of this uh, rough connection. That, that will give it greater hydraulic efficiency, make it easier to clean, and uh, just be a better product. Uh, we do find uh, debris in it. This is a large rock found it. And here's a picture of here, uh, a broken pipe. Broken, broken pipe. Um, and a lateral intruding, as I was mentioning, as a hole in the side of the pipe. This is the one portion that's solid. Some areas it is cracked longitudinally. That, that starts to really worry me because that, that is the beginning of a collapse. I have some roots. Um, the roots, we're going to put in a root barrier to keep roots from coming under the synthetic field. Uh, so, but one of the difficulties with this corrugated pipe is it's very difficult to clean. We can't rot it out very easily. And here's, here's the sign of the beginning of a collapse. Um, and uh, as I was saying, the, the, this is the original plans for 20 years ago. This is the, the, the perforated laterals that we were looking at, the T into the pipe. Um, and this filter fabric was not placed at this location. So this sand and this upper bedding of sand under the field uh, has migrated down into the drain rock around the pipe. And the drain rock needs to have voids because that's how it drains. You get the sand mixed in with the drain rock, it doesn't drain. So basically that's contaminant and that's got to go. So we're, we're going to be digging this out anyways. So it really makes sense to do the pipes at the same time. The pipes we're going to go with are a material called N12. It's corrugated on the outside for strength, but it's smooth on the inside. And it's been invented in the past 20 years since this, this field was, uh, was installed. And the fittings will be teed. Uh, there'll be T fittings at the main to the laterals. So um, the uh, contractor gave us a fair price for it. Um, and uh, it was actually the contractor's recommendation to do this. He felt that it would be make it a much better product. He had a, the pipe and material uh, and labor was about 160000 150000 But he took 40000 off for the effort that he would have done to put drain rock in, in, in here. He was supposed to put drain rock to that point. So he gave us a credit for part of the work. It seems like a, a pretty fair deal. And um, it, it, um, it does cut into your budget for other capital projects um, that you could have done with the remaining Measure G balance. But, you know, my theory is do the project right, and then, and then we'll just work down the priority list with what, what, what the money that's left over. So I would recommend approval of the change order and be glad to answer, answer any questions. Great. Questions? None. Anybody? Anybody like to speak on this item? Us? Mr. Grace? <laughs> Jeff Gray, Jeff Grace, uh, St. Carlos. Um, didn't really come here to comment on this, but since this presentation was given um, during my time on the field committee, I was fortunate to learn a lot about fields that I never thought I'd want to know, but has come in handy, I guess. Um, one of the main issues that was stressed during uh, our different set sessions with natural turf, artificial turf, whoever came in and talked about it, they heavily stressed the substructure and primarily the drainage. If this drainage isn't correct, it isn't going to work right. And I've been convinced for 15 plus years that that drainage wasn't right in Highlands, and that's why we were in this position well anyway in the first place, because I don't think the drainage is ever correct from the original construction. So I would encourage us, let's go ahead and do this the right way, put in the drainage. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Grace. Anybody else? Bonnie McClure. Bonnie McClure, St. Carlos. Ditto. <laughs> Thank you. Me too. Okay. Uh, with that, can I hear a motion? It's okay. Let's move uh, approval of the change order. Second. I will call, please. Councilmember Mon. Yes. Councilmember Gokart. Yes. Councilmember Klein. Yes. Mayor Weiss. Uh, yes. 
Uh, just before I adjourn, just uh, want to remind, I think I see two action items, make sure staff has them. One is Mr. Gokot, uh, based on public comment, commented uh, about the library and some of the capital improvements and so forth, and then come back and report on that. And the other item uh, we all echoed was uh, with the, the uh, disaster in San Bruno. Uh, there are some opportunities there to, uh, to do some reporting back to council to the public. Uh, disaster planning was part of that that Mr. Ahmad spoke about. And other than that, did I miss anything else, Mr. Prime? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I was just pointing out to me recently that this is our city manager's last meeting um, at the helm of our city, so I just want to wish him very well and good luck in your future plans, and I hope your uh, golf score comes down. All right. Yeah, congratulations, Mark. All right. With that, adjourn. Thank you. <laughs>